U.S. State Department flags executive interference in Guyana's judiciary. PPP-nominated commissioners suggest GCAM statutory meetings should recommence after CCJ rules on no-confidence vote. Virgin Union woman found to dead in bathtub. And in sport, nine medals, including goals for Guyana at Carifta Games. These and more coming up after the break. Stay with us. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. Slimjet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick, and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at Slimjet, City Mall, second floor. Visit Gafur's Flatback Department at MacDoom and enjoy massive discounts. Get up to 13% discount on Barama plywood and a 10% discount on imported plywood such as WBP Pine, OES, Black Film, Marine Ply, etc. Special prices on Naughty Pine Doors. Buy 50 pieces or more and you pay just $7,500 each plus VAT. Now available, treated pine lumber in 1 inch and 2 inch thickness, width 3 inches to 12 inches, and lengths 10 feet to 20 feet. Also introducing skim dress local hardwood in sizes 2 inches by 4 inches in lengths 10 feet to 20 feet. We stock only specific length, so you save as compared to when you buy random lengths. And you'll get a 10% discount on both pine and local lumber. You'll get discounts on large and small quantities. So visit Gaffoos at MacDoom and ask for Kamla. Telephone 227-1503 or 223-9896 extension 1134. They'll also be available at our six locations countrywide. Gaffoos, the leaders for quality, service and price. Good evening and welcome to this or Tuesday, April 23, 2019 edition of News Update. I am LaShawna Gomes Cornelius, our top story this evening. A recent report by the United States Department of State has concluded that there is executive or political interference in the local judiciary. Details from Sandy Ramatar. The U.S. State Department Bureau of Affairs and Climate Investment Statements 2018 have indicated that there might be executive influence in the judiciary. The report said though the Constitution provides for the independence of the judiciary, in practice the executive has some influence over the judicial branch of government. It made clear that the hearing of civil matters is a slow process and many perceive it to be unfair. Judgments within the Commonwealth are considered judicial precedents once laws are silent here. 
For this reason, Apple clients have sought redress at the Carbon Court of Justice. Perceived notions of influence were mounted when the government moved to the Court of Appeal to seek redress, where the High Court's decision was overturned in a 2-1 majority, invalidating the motion. The basis of the ruling at the appeals court was that 33 is not the majority of 65, despite precedents and many other jurisdictions showed otherwise. Two of the appeal judges ruled that 34 is the majority of 65, and therefore the December 21, 2018 no-confidence motion received 33 favorable votes was not validly passed. Guyanese are now awaiting the final conclusion from the appellate court on the decision of the validity of the December 21 confidence motion. The hearing of the case is scheduled for May 10. People's Progressive Party commissioners today requested the Ghana Elections Commission to stall the statutory meetings until the Caribbean Court of Justice rules on a no-confidence motion, but their request was shut down by the People's National Congress commissioners. Details from Sandy Ramatar. People's Progressive Party nominated commissioners at the Ghana Elections Commission today request for the Secretariat to stall the statutory meetings until the Carbon Court of Justice rules on a no confidence motion. The hearing is scheduled for May 10. The decision can prompt an early election or allow the government to stay through its five years term until May 2020. Retired Justice James Patterson, who chairs the commission, agreed to have the meetings stalled, but was challenged by the People's National Congress nominated commissioners. For this reason, the commissioners again walked out the meeting, refusing to continue discussions on House to House registration. The Elections Commission has already embarked on a House to House registration process with the training of trainers process. The electoral body said it will be ready to run off regional and general elections in November. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. A pedestrian was earlier today killed after he was struck down whilst attempting to cross the number 11 public road east to coast Barbies. Dead is 30-year-old Stanley Brown of Lot 8, number 11 village east coast Barbies. I News Guyana reported that motor car PTT 8022 was heading along the roadway when the now dead man reportedly emerged from behind a parked truck and began to cross the roadway. Upon seeing this, the driver of the motor car who hails from Block X Diamond Housing Scheme, East Bank Demerara, allegedly swerved to avoid a collision and in so doing, the right front of the vehicle collided with Braun. As a result of the impact, Braun ended up crashing into the front windscreen of the motor car and then onto the roadway. He sustained injuries about his body and was picked up in an unconscious state and taken to the New Amsterdam hospital where he died while receiving medical attention. The driver was subjected to a breathalyzer test but there was no trace of alcohol in his blood. He was nevertheless arrested and is assisting with the investigations. Head of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit, Michael Attlee, has expressed concern over the possibility of further drug smuggling through Guyana's border with Venezuela, as the economic situation in that country continues to be unstable. Attlee explained the drug smuggling trade via the Guyana-Venezuelan border has always been a concern of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit. The head of Cano said despite the present economic situation in Venezuela, the drug trade via the border has not increased. However, he noted that Cano is remaining vigilant as it pertains to its monitoring of the drug smuggling situation through the country's borders. Since this matter, we are very carefully looking at the issue. That is always an issue. Venezuela, drugs coming through Venezuela and Guyana was always a major issue. It comes from Colombia into Venezuela, into Guyana, and then it goes either to West Africa, to Europe, or to the United States, to North America. Since the economic situation in Venezuela erupted, hundreds of Venezuelans in search of better opportunities came to Guyana via the border. There have been countless reports by Guyanese living in outlining communities near the Guyana-Venezuelan border, claiming incidences of drug-related crimes and random killings committed on residents by Venezuelan gang members who come into the country illegally. As a result, many have called for there to be tighter security and monitoring along the country's borders, especially with Venezuela. Atlee explained if it is found that the Ministry of Citizenship identifies a narcotics transmission link at any of the country's borders, Kanu will intervene. Um, if they have problems that they recognize that narcotics might be involved, of course, Kanu and the other law enforcement agencies would get involved in trying to, um, to reduce that.
The minor who was allegedly abducted following a shooting incident at Kerberon Trail, Patara River, has managed to escape. This was confirmed by police in a statement to the media earlier today. Police have, however, stated that they are investigating the murder of 34-year-old Perrion Redmond Bob, a driver mechanic of Lot 23 Carabesi Hill, Bartica. He was reportedly shot at close range to the stomach and died immediately. Thomas, who was in the vehicle at the time of the shooting, was allegedly abducted by the suspects, but made good his escape. The police have also confirmed that two men are in custody and are assisting with investigation. The police have not released any information that might, might, might have led, led rather to the fatal shooting and abduction of Thomas. It was reported the shooting might have stemmed from an old grievance involving stripping a truck of its parts, which were later taken and installed onto another vehicle. The investigation into the recent allegation of a drug ring at East Ramvelt a secondary school was hampered as parents refused to cooperate. This is according to the head of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit, Michael Attali. Prior to the closure of schools for the Easter holiday, the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit had conducted a probe into an alleged drug ring at the East Rumvelt Secondary School. According to the head of Kano, Michael Attali, at least four students were questioned. Despite extensive work by officers with the aid of the Ministry of Education and the Guyana Police Force, Attali explained the outcome of that investigation was inconclusive. I am saying that... We did not get the evidence that we hoped to get because the parents were not as cooperative as we thought they would have been. They did not want their kids to get too deeply involved in, in questions and answers by the law enforcement agency. The issue of drug distribution has been occurring in mostly top schools, utterly posited. Attlee is worried if the matter is not tackled collaboratively by the relevant agencies, the issue of drugs reaching school children would become immense. It's something that can get a lot larger if we don't um, find a solution to it along with the Ministry of Education and the social workers that can help as well. The CANU has to be involved, the Ministry has asked them to be involved. I'm talking particularly about the general matter of drugs in use in school. In February of 2018, CANU uncovered a drug ring involving several students of both Queen's College and Nerd Georgetown Secondary School. After one student of Queen's College fell ill after taking the psychoactive drug ecstasy. In early September 2018, the Kanu uncovered the said drug, also known as methamphetamine or the date rape drug, in at least five schools across Region 2 and Region 4. According to Atley, the agency will continue its probe when the new school term begins. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156.
Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Police on the west coast of the Marara have launched an investigation into the discovery of the body of a 24-year-old woman in the bathtub of her Virgin Union East Bank Esequibo home. The dead woman has been identified as Olita Mendez, a 24-year-old employee of the Court of Appeal. Based on a police report, the woman's body was discovered early this morning in her bathtub by a relative. According to investigators, the body bore no visible signs of injury. Police said, based on their initial observation, they are working with a theory the woman may have suffered a seizure and drowned, but they are not ruling out a foul play. Reports are that a relative who made a discovery attempted to revive the woman but was unsuccessful. It is not known whether the woman had suffered from any medical complications. The police investigations into the death of Alita Mendez is ongoing. The grieving relatives of the dead woman have declined to comment at this time. Guyanese who returned home following the collapse of the economy of Venezuela are still complaining of the limited opportunities available and the unfavorable living conditions. They are currently squatting in non -parallel. After receiving a few food hampers from the government a few months ago and the installation of a few standpipes by the Ghana Water Incorporated, non pearl squatters are forced to survive in the face of grave challenges. The squatters are Guyanese who lived the most of their lives in Venezuela but fled the country over a year now due to the economic crisis and the political instability. The residents, which include over a dozen children, are pleading for government assistance as the living condition is unsuitable for human occupancy. The people who all lived comfortably in Venezuela whilst the economy was booming are now forced to be in this situation after losing jobs and the depreciation of the currency. Further, as they continue to squat, they complain of harassment by landowners in the area. They are requesting further government assistance to allocate them house lots promising to work and pay in tranches. At least if we could help you up with a house lot, right, we're willing to pay for it when we get a um, good job and everything. If we could get a chance to pay for it little by little as we walk, right, we'll highly appreciate it because I need a piece of land at least to put up a workshop and maintain myself and family. Court free brooms, MTV, News Update. Vice Chancellor of the University of Guyana, I. Floyd Griffith, says he is willing to have his contract renewed in the face of criticisms from union leaders at the university. Griffith claimed as his contract comes to an end, the union leaders have stepped up their campaign to force him out. However, he made it clear that he has already expressed interest in renewing his contract. He affirmed that he intends to continue the work of rebuilding and rebranding the university. The vice chancellor also rejected that $400,000 was spent on dinner for eight executives while there is no toilet paper and soap for staff as carried by one newspaper. The Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union is fully supporting the diversification of the sugar estates, stating it will contribute to social stability. The union has been decrying the closure and sale of estates under the coalition government. The coalition government, after promising not to close the sugar estates prior to the 2015 elections, eventually closed the Wales Sugar Factory, Rose Hall, Skeldon and East Demerara estates. The last three were reopened, but only until they are sold. The government's rationale is that it is unfeasible to keep the estates in operation using billions of taxpayers' dollars. As such, a diversification project is ongoing, with the pilot being at Wales. The Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union, GAU, is now ramping up the call for the byproducts of sugar to be used. The byproducts are the cane tops, 
which is used as feed for livestock, bagasse, used for the production of energy, and molasses, used for rum production. Gao says it is important to pursue the uses of sugarcane byproducts, stating it would greatly contribute to social stability, improve the economic conditions, and maintain the pride of sugar workers across the nation. Stating that sugar workers are the most committed and a persistent group in any national industry, the union says this would provide regular work for the employees. Currently, sugar workers are decrying working conditions and a lack of work. There have been several protests in Burbis and at Iflot. Quad Free Brooms, MTV News Update. A devastating fire has left a businessman counting his losses after it ravaged his multi-million dollar sawmill at Spring Gardens Essequibo on Easter Monday. iNews Guyana reported. Based on reports received, a fire was spotted at about 17.30 hours on the day in question and the Guyana Fire Service was immediately summoned but the firemen arrived until 19 hours. Upon arriving at the scene, the men desperately attempted rather to save the business but encountered several difficulties. It is believed that the dry sawdust around the compound would have caught fire, thus making it much more difficult for the fire tenders to put out the blaze. The website said a farmer was burning his field when the fire rapidly charged course and started that fire at the sawmill. The fire officials are presently investigating the cause of the fire. However, the owner of the business, Ramesh Ramatar, refused to offer a comment. Here is Rajesh Lakan with this week's Star Tech Wrap. Good evening. Welcome to the Star Technology Wrap. As always, I'm your host, Rajesh Lakan. And with me is Jeremy. And this week we'll be discussing the Itty Bitty Buggy, a new line of devices available at Star Computer Innovation Center. Jeremy, tell us about it. Okay, so with the Itty Bitty Buggy, what it allows is for children to have an interactive yet fun experience when it comes to learning about electronics, building, and also programming. Great, tell us how it works. Okay, so how it works is with an app that you can download on any iOS or Android device. With this app come several modes and also instructions in how you can build the, the uh, different models that you see on the box here. With these models now, there are various ways in which you can control it. So now we have it in the uh, standard model right now. And the mode that is currently um, in work here is the line tracing mode. That is just one out of the five modes that are offered to children. So right now I'm in line tracing. I'll switch over to the remote control mode. So basically what happens here is that a standard controller is now on my screen and I can now move the buggy how I wish. So I'll just move it forward for you. Or to the left, sorry. Then to the right, then forward. So I'll just do a 360 there. Great, can it be voice control as well? It can be voice control as well. So uh, let me just change that. Okay. Move forward. Stop. What's the objective of Star bringing on this new device here? Okay, well, the objective is just to capture kids, you know, imagination and creativity through a device like this. Generally, kids don't get an opportunity to learn, but at the same time having fun, you know? So what actually happens here is that this device is fully compatible with Lego. We know Lego to be something that children love to play around with, build with, and express their imaginations through. But adding technology to that now gives them an opportunity to learn about electronics, you know, and programming. So they can effectively build whatever they see in their imagination, whether it be a car, whether it be a robot, you know, whether it be a spider that's indicated here, right? And once they build that, they can move it, they can program it to go forward, backwards, uh, how slowly they want it to move, how many steps, you know, all these are things that children can do in terms of the programming, you know, and allows them to appreciate those things from an early age. More creativity and thinking as well. Yes. 
Great. This device series is only for display purposes or you guys have it for sale? Okay, well, it will be coming on sale pretty soon, uh -huh. you know, and we're expecting that children are going to love it. It's very good. It's a very good product. Um, and I would recommend it to children around the ages of eight and above. Great. Can parents, um, given that school is currently out, can parents bring their children along to test it out, have a hands-on approach to it? Of course. Children can come and we'll be um, given a chance to hold the device, use it, uh, build something if they wish, you know, fully get engaged in it and they can tell us if they like it or not. But we, I am sure that they, are, they love the device. Great. And no charge attached to that, right? No, no. Not at all. <laughs> Great. Aside from that, what else is happening here at STARS? Okay, so what else is happening at STARS is that uh, we have other devices that are also on showcase, uh, such as the uh, globe, the STEM globe. We have also uh, Einstein, which is basically a toy robot that allows you to ask him questions. He'll answer back to you in intelligent ways. You could also learn a lot from him, you know. Also, we have other things that are also, you know, that we're also planning to put out on sale. Um, all of that you can check up on our Facebook page, you know, we'll have updated information on there for you to check out. Great, well thank you Jeremy. And that's what we have for you in this week's edition of Star Technology Wrap. Do join us next week Monday for another edition. Here is Celine Griffith with today's health tip. Malaria is a disease caused by a parasite. The parasite is transmitted to humans through the bites of infected mosquitoes. People who have malaria usually feel very sick with a high fever and shaking chills. Each year, approximately 210 million people are infected with malaria and about 440,000 people die from the disease. Symptoms A malaria infection is generally characterized by the following signs and symptoms. Fever, chills, headache, nausea and vomiting, muscle pain and fatigue. Other signs and symptoms may include sweating, chest or abdominal pain, cough. Some people who have malaria experience cycles of malaria attacks. An attack usually starts with shivering and chills, followed by a high fever, followed by sweating and the return to normal temperature. Malaria signs and symptoms typically begin within a few weeks after being bitten by an infected mosquito. However, some types of malaria parasites can lie dormant in your body for up to a year. Causes Malaria is caused by a type of microscopic parasite. The parasite is transmitted to humans most commonly through mosquito bites. Because the parasites that cause malaria affect red blood cells, people can also catch malaria from exposure to infected blood, including from mother to unborn child, through blood transfusions, by sharing needles used to inject drugs. People at increased risk of serious disease include young children and infants, older adults, travelers coming from areas with no malaria, pregnant women and their unborn children, poverty, lack of knowledge, and little or no access to healthcare also contribute to malaria deaths worldwide. Treatment. Malaria is treated with prescription drugs to kill the parasite. The type of drugs and the length of treatment will vary depending on which type of malaria parasite you have, the severity of your symptoms, your age, and whether you are pregnant. Prevention. If you live in or are traveling to an area where malaria is common, take steps to avoid mosquito bites. Mosquitoes are most active between dusk and dawn. To protect yourself from mosquito bites, you should 1. Cover your skin by wearing pants and long-sleeved shirts. 2. Apply insect repellent to skin and clothing. 3. Sleep under a net. Bed nets, particularly those treated with insecticide, help prevent mosquito bites while you are sleeping. Coming up after the break, MTV Sport Update and more. Stay with us. Beeson Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. 
For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. For all your supermarket needs, check out Nervous at 49 Sheriff and Craig Street, Georgetown. We have a wide variety of groceries, confectioneries, alcohol and non-alcohol beverages. Fresh meat, fruits and vegetables also available. Don't forget to check out our cosmetics section. Best prices, great deals. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Visit Gaffer's Ironmongery Department for all your building needs. Bolts and nuts, zinc plated, high tensile, anchor bolts and treaded rods. Package nails for your convenience, screws for wood, metal and concrete. Building a fence, we've got cast iron railheads and decorative fencing, gate slides and pivots, laser and barbed wire. For your carpentry needs, we stock tight bond, wood glues and evo stick. Hasps and staples, hinges, butts, catches and brackets, and a wide selection of modern design cupboard handles and knobs. Secure your property and loved ones with quality Yale products such as padlocks, available in several sizes and types. Knobs, lever, deadlocks and decorative door locks. Moving heavy loads is easy with caster wheels and hand trucks that cater for any job. For construction, you've got scaffolding along with ladders, multi-purpose, extended, fiberglass and step ladders too. For everything you need under one roof, it's Gaffoos, the name you can trust. Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion, removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc and available nationwide. Welcome to the MTV Sport Update. Guyana's 21 member contingent for the 48th edition of the Carifta Games in the Cayman Islands wrapped up the three-day event with four gold, two silver and three bronze medals. Day one saw Shikuka Tyrell copying the team's first medal at the 2019 Games when she finished the girls under 17, 1500 meters with a time of 4 minutes and 52 seconds. Claude Rice McCoy then ran personal best in the 1500 meters to secure Guyana's first gold medal of the Games with a time of 39.46 seconds. Shantoba Bright then won gold in the girls under 20 long jump at a distance of 6.05 meters. Matthew Gordon had his eyes set on securing the boys under 17, 1500 meters, but unfortunately tripped closer to the end of the race. However, he managed to recover to finish fifth, running 4 minutes and 12 seconds. On day two, Anisha Gibbons in the first event won Guyana's first gold medal in the girls under 17 javelin when she topped her throw of 40.34 meters. 
Audrell Austin won bronze in the girls under 17 800 meters, clocking in at 2 minutes and 12 seconds. On the final day of action, Matthew Gordon had a bit of redemption for the 1500 meters heartbreak he suffered when he secured a gold medal in the boys under 17 300 meters. McCoy won her second medal of the games when she ran 10 minutes and 37 seconds to claim bronze in the women's 3000 meters open. Last year, the 47th edition of the Karifta Games ended with nine medals, the most ever for the country at the Games. This time around, however, the four gold medals is the first for the country. Chelsea Griffith, report of MGV Sports Update. Assistant coach Roddy Estwick has hailed the work ethic of the West Indies squad during the ongoing training camp here. The Caribbean side are preparing for the Tri-Nation series in Ireland involving Bangladesh starting next week and are also intensifying their planning for the ICC Cricket World Cup 2019, England and Wales, which begins on May 30. They have been tremendous, we can't fault them, and they have really worked hard and the senior players are stepping up, Estwick said. Estwick has been alongside new interim head coach Floyd Reefer, fast bowler coach Corey Collimore and fielding coach Ryan Griffith as the squad has been put through their paces. Estwick said there were several areas which had needed attention and the players had gone about it, addressing them with intensity. West Indies take on Ireland and Bangladesh from May 3 to 17 in what will be their final series before they open their World Cup campaign. And even though they have been identified as one of the outsiders to win the World Cup, Estwick urged caution in the side's approach. Haley Matthews and Stacey Ann King have been included by the Cricket West Indies interim selection panel in a 14-member West Indies women's squad that will tour Ireland and England from May 21 to June 26. Matthews returns to the squad after an injury layoff when she damaged her MCL playing in the Women's Big Bash in Australia last December. Says Yan King is returning to international cricket after almost three years' absence. King last represented the West Indies women in the home series against England in 2016. The 14 member squad, along with the six reserved players, will assemble in Antigua from May 6 to May 20 for a training camp before the touring party's departure to Ireland from Antigua on May 21. The Windies women will play Ireland in three T20 internationals on May 26, May 28 and May 29. Then they play England in three one-day internationals as part of the ICC Women's Championships on June 6, June 9 and June 13. Followed by three T20 internationals on June 18 and June 21, followed by June 25. The full squad reads Stephanie Taylor, Haley Matthews, Deandra Dottin, Afi Fletcher, Karish McRamharak, Chadeen Nation, Chanel Henry, Kishana Knight, Kaisia Knight, Shakira Selman, Shamila Connell, Shamine Campbell, Natasha McLean, and Stacey Ann King. Chelsea Griffith, reporter of MTV Sports Update. The Shanghai Super Kings returned to the top of the Vivo IPL 2019 standings after they defeated Sunriders Hyderabad by six wickets at the MA Chandraban Stadium on Tuesday night. The Super Kings' chase of 176 was powered by Shane Watson's stroke filled 96. The host got over the line with one ball to spare. The Super Kings lost opener Faf du Plessis in the third over, but the chase was put back on the trails almost straight away by an 87-run stand between Watson and Suresh Reyna. After Reyna was dismissed in the 10th over, Watson took control of proceedings, playing at just over a run a ball. Watson timed his acceleration brilliantly and helped himself to 96. He was unlucky to miss out on a well-deserved 100, top-edging a short pitch delivery off Bhuvneshwar Kumar with his team on the brink. For the Sunrisers, Bhuvneshwar Kumar, Khalil Ahmed and Shakib Al-Hassan were economical with the ball, while Sandeep Sharma and Rashid Khan had a poor day. In the evening, the Sunrisers, axed to bat first, got to 175 for three, riding on David Warner's 57 and Manish Pandey's 83 not out. The visitors were without regular captain Kane Williamson and therefore had to alter their 11. Shakib Al-Hassan and Manish Pandey made the playing 11. After Johnny Bairstow ended his season with a second ball duck, Warner and Pandey stitched together a 1-15 run partnership to put the innings back on track. Both batsmen matched each other stroke for stroke early on and helped Sunrisers reach 54 for one at the end of the power play. 
The pair not only ran well between the wickets, but also kept picking up the boundaries regularly. Pandey brought up his half century in the 11th over, getting there in 25 balls, while Warner reached the milestone in the following over, getting there in 39 deliveries. Warner, however, was dismissed in the 14th over when he was beaten in the air by a tossed up delivery from Harbhajan Singh, and MS Dhoni whipped off the stumps pretty easily. It was that wicket at 120 for 2 in the 13.3 overs that caused Sunrisers' momentum. Despite a well set manage batting at one end, the Sunrisers could never hit the acceleration gear. They only managed 55 runs off the final 39 balls. For the Super Kings, the wickets were shared between Harbhajan Singh and Deepak Jahar. The 42nd match of the 2019 IPL will see the Royal Challengers Bangalore facing the Kings 11 Punjab from 10 hours 30 tomorrow. Chelsea Griffith the report of MTV Sports Update. Windy's opener Chris Gale struck his third half century in his last four outings to pass 400 runs for yet another Indian Premier League season. But the effort went in vain as Kings 11 Punjab slipped to five wicket defeat to Sherfin Rutherford's Delhi Capitals on Saturday. Sent in at the Frosha Kotla, Kings 11 rallied for 163 for seven of their 20 overs. The left handed Gale blasting 69 of 37 balls to notch his fourth half century of the campaign and the eighth year of an illustrious career. Gale, who punched six fours and five sixes, put on four to five for the fourth wicket with Mandeep before departing in the 13th over. Caught on the deep mid-wicket boundary of La Michani, courtesy of a relay catch between Colin Ingram and Axar Patel. The Ghana Table Tennis Association secured qualification for a Paralympic athlete to represent the nation at the 2019 Pan American Games Paralympic Table Tennis Championships that will be held in Lima, Peru this July. This was confirmed when the GTTA received a correspondence from Pablo Perez, head of Para Table Tennis and executive vice president of the International Table Tennis Federation, who responded to the local body's request for a wild card application for Jibrain Hussein. Hussein is a level 20 Paralympic athlete and is experienced in playing in tournaments in the United States of America. He intends to use this tournament to improve his ranking to participate in other international events. Hussein's highest ranking is 38th in the world. Paralympic sports have gained featured prominence in recent times, with the para edition of sporting disciplines becoming a mandatory feature of all international Olympic cycle games. Hussein was elated with the announcement and is ready to commence his journey of representing Guyana and inspiring other para athletes. Chelsea Griffith, report of MTV Sport Update. A National Basketball Association coach is being sued for the alleged sexual assault of a sports reporter, U.S. media report. In the lawsuit obtained by TMZ and ESPN, Kelly Tennant alleges Sacramento Kings coach Luke Walton forced himself on her in California Hotel. At the time, he was assistant coach for the Golden State Warriors and another California NBA team, says the lawsuit. In a statement, Mr. Walton's lawyer called the accusations baseless. According to legal documents obtained by U.S. media, Ms. Tennant met Mr. Walton in his suite at the Hotel Casa del Mar in Santa Monica to give him a copy of her 2014 book. More news after the break. Stay with us. Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion, removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc and available nationwide. Now for some news in the region. Rescue workers have found 11 bodies buried in the mud after a landslide hit the Colombian town of Rosas on Sunday. The number of people killed in the town in southwestern Cauca province has risen to 28. At least two people are still missing, but emergency workers say hopes of finding anyone alive are slim. Landslides are common in Colombia and houses built in steep hillsides are at particular risk during the country's rainy season. In April 2017, more than 250 people were killed when a landslide hit the town of Macau in Patumayo province. 
On the international scene, the Islamic State ISIS group may be linked to bomb blast which killed 321 people and wounded 500 in Sri Lanka, the country's prime minister has said. Ranik Wickramasinghe said the government believes Sunday's attacks could not have been carried out without the help from terror groups abroad. The first mass funeral was held on Tuesday as Sri Lanka marked an official day of mourning for the victims. A state of emergency remains in effect to prevent further attacks. Police have now detained four to suspects in connection with the attack, all of whom were Sri Lankan nationals. The Islamic State ISIS group claimed the attack on Tuesday via its Amak News outlet. Sri Lanka's government has blamed the blast on local Islamist group National Trohid Jamaat. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Let's turn our attention to the Demerara Harbour Bridge and the Burbies River Bridge schedules. That's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here is a reminder of our top stories. U.S. State Department flags executive interference in Guyana's judiciary. PBP nominated commissioners suggest GCOM statutory meetings should recommence after CCJ rules on no confidence vote. Virgin Newton woman found dead in bathtub. And in sport, nine medals, including six goals for Guyana at Carifta Games. Catch our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Lashona Gomes Cornelius. Good night.